there some area in your life which you went a big transformation through recently or i would say from the end of january and from past year from last september around 2018 you have been feeling that things are moving as the way you want it or things are moving the way you thought it should have and then as the new year kicked off you would have felt that there are certain things which you expected came to a halt and then there was massive transformation during the end of january month and finally you thought that you were victorious in all your efforts but do you still feel that you have not seen the results manifesting at a concrete level okay so if that's happening to you then hold on you're not alone everybody is there because venus has transited into dhanishtha nakshatra just and it's going to stay there almost till 26th or 27th of this month march 2019 now this is a very short transit but why am i making a video on this because although it's short it's a very important transit so what's happening is and yes if you are new and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe and if you like this video click the thumbs up and watch my other videos which i have made on transit on the jupiter's gandanta transit that has got around 18k views i guess in a very short time so if you have not watched it you could watch it and also the rahu ketu transit video many people have been asking me that has also got around 48 49000 views so if you have not watched that then please watch it okay it's important to watch these two videos all right so now what's happening is or let's see what actually happened long back so september last year venus entered its mool trikon sign of libra so when venus entered libra it came into a very good dignity dignity means the avastha as they say not not on a literal sense but how the planet feels about itself so when a planet goes into mool trikon it feels as if it is in a very good place it's exactly where he should be he feels like that exaltation he is the sign where he feels that there's nothing better than this in this world but mool trikon is also a great placement it's the second bla- best placement so whenever venus enters mool trikon whichever houses venus rules in your chart depending on your ascendant so for newcomers venus rules number 2 and number 7 so whichever house number 2 and 7 taurus and libra is following that is where venus is ruling so these two houses specifically you would have felt that there is a lot, lot of optimism which was surrounding around these houses september october november december because four months venus was retrograde and it was combust so after that what happened it went into the sign of scorpio so there was a bloated level of optimism because jupiter the planet of optimism is in scorpio so it's like saying you are happy then you met another person who made you more happier yes so especially people who have a uh, taurus and libra very prominent so if you have the ascendant or your sun or moon or rather i would say ascendant or moon in taurus or libra then you might have felt this more that the month of january was very optimistic for you and there are many people who have told me that they've done certain things which they have never done in the month of january in the last 40 years there are people who have told me anyway so the point is what happened after uh, it crossed the uh, sign of scorpio because in scorpio there is the gandanta zone as we know gandanta zone is uh, the end of a water sign and it's the beginning of a fire sign the last degree of the water sign and the beginning one degree of the fire sign so venus crossed that gandanta zone so when it crossed that gandanta zone you would have experienced that there was a transformation which was required there were a lot of things which became clear you would have realized this 
But then what happened? Venus met his, his best friend Saturn in the sign of Sagittarius. Now that's the fun. Uh, you meet your best friend but <laughs> uh, your best friend likes to catch you and <laughs> doesn't let you go. <laughs> <laughs> Saturn is like that even though Mercury and Venus are his best friends I mean all three of them of course but Saturn is a natural malefic irrespective of who he is sitting or where he is sitting or with whom he is conjunct so he delays things so around January end to mid of February or third week that time you would have felt depending on the houses which Venus is ruling and especially for Taurus Libra people that you were very bloated when it was with Jupiter and then now suddenly it's like oh my god nothing's working so but then congratulations then what happened to you then the same Venus was moving ahead and then it met the beautiful the best of the best Pluto in Sagittarius so that was around the uh, end of February and even more congratulations after that what happened Venus went and met Ketu in zero degrees my god so Venus was very badly hemmed between these three malefics very badly I mean of course Sun Mercury were also hemmed but Venus when Venus gets hemmed between malefics then it could happen that we lose the desire to do things which could make us happy because Venus deals with choices. So it could have appeared to people who have Venus prominent. It could have appeared that life is not worth improving. Or even if you try to improve things, it's it's not happening actually. So what is the use you know anyways if you try to improve things don't improve and even if it does then how how better is it going to be right so that's the feeling which you could have got depending on the houses which Venus rules in the chart of course so those houses would have gone for a ride ride in the sense that you are having a lot of ideas and then suddenly there is a halt and see when uh, Venus goes into conjunction with Pluto what happens there is a massive change sudden change is there sudden doesn't mean sudden ac actually but it means an unusual change see Uranus gives you changes which which you could expect in some way sudden changes big changes massive changes but Pluto gives you changes which you which nobody can ever expect it's like suddenly things happen which never ever happened and once in a year I mean for two days three days Venus and Pluto are always conjunct because Venus almost completes the cycle in one year so during those two three days so this time it was I guess uh, end of February around that time Venus and Pluto were conjunct so there you must had seen that Massive changes have taken place during that time. Okay. Externally, it may not be the, the way, but internally, it would have definitely happened. I have messages I can show you. People have messaged me that, oh, my Venus is 10th Lord. This thing happened in my career. Exactly on that day, it happened. Anyway, so whatever happens at the end will depend on your dasha. But the point is, after that, what happened? Venus went for one week till 6th March. It was with Ketu. And 6th March Ketu went from Capricorn to Sagittarius. So then what happened? So when Venus met Ketu there, Ketu see Saturn tells you that your expectations may not be fulfilled. And Ketu tells you even if it is if it, if it's fulfilled so what? <laughs> so that is why I said life felt that it's not worth living for. Or it's life is not worth improving. Sun can give you that feeling that life is not worth living. And yes, Sun was also hemmed between these three malefics. And then Venus. 
and mercury somehow <laughs> went <laughs> so now finally venus is out of the range of all these malefics finally it is out and now it is in dhanishta nakshatra and yes it will also get conjoint uh, neptune after some time but there are no there are no malefics on the other side which means like when venus was conjunct pluto or it was conjunct saturn then ketu was also there ahead but now when it is conjunct neptune neptune is in aquarius and uranus is in aries currently it's in 5 degree 60 around that so definitely venus has still got challenges to deal with neptune and uranus neptune deals with dream lands confusion so that could be there but you also have to check the nakshatras so venus has crossed from swati nakshatra swati nakshatra deals with materialistic desire which is endless endless desire that's why you everywhere and then you go to vishaka where you see the concrete manifestations of your desires and in vishaka what happens you see your limitations because you may want to eat 10000 gulab jams but you can't eat <laughs> your body will not allow you if you eat you will die yes there are people who have died when they are eating and then finally you cross anuradha and you go to jeshta where you are with jupiter and then that fight is going on for the throne and then you cross gandanta and you then then you enter mula nakshatra where you are simply uprooting things and building grassroots then you enter purvashada where you think that you are so powerful that i can do anything to anybody and then you enter uttarashada where you actually realize you become humble that maybe i was not that powerful even though i was victorious maybe but somebody else was victorious too and then you enter shravan from last two weeks what happens in shravan shravan gives you that peace of mind which you lost shravan nakshatra settles down things and dhanishta gives you the opportunity to celebrate so now is the time because venus is out of these three malefics saturn pluto and ketu although still there are planets like uh, uranus and neptune neptune and uranus on the way i mean but it is still out and that is why now dhanishta nakshatra has connotations related to drums lord shiva so you could see that people who have venus prominent they could they could have a tendency to worship lord shiva now irrespective of that you will see that now is the time when you can actually relish some of the things which you wished but here is the catch mercury is retrograde and it has entered purva bhadrapada nakshatra so purva bhadrapada is a very interesting nakshatra purva bhadrapada in one sense it deals with the frustration which you get when your expectations are not met so purva bhadrapada can teach you how to lower your expectations because the amount of frustration is directly proportional to the amount of expectations the more you expect the more you get frustrated because people will make you frustrated they will disappoint you in your expectations So now what's happening is mercury is going retrograde that means mercury is bringing some of the old issues and now mercury is going to tell you look your expectations are not met here so now see what's happening venus has entered dhanishta that means some results you see that is manifesting but on the other hand mercury has entered purva bhadrapada so there what will happen is very simple you will see that things have happened the way you wanted but not to the extent that you wanted so it could happen that you you have to settle for something less and that's good for you to be very honest 
and it's not that you will settle for anything and everything but you may not settle to the extent you thought you will settle that you can very easily notice now so specifically from now which is around uh, what's the date 17th to 26th 27th you will see this manifesting and then when venus enters shatta bhisha nakshatra then you will see that that will speak on some other video <laughs> okay but anyways that point was that venus is now out of all this so you will see that things are manifesting during these days you will see that okay and what it will be to what extent it will be and how mercury's role will be there in purva bhadra pada nakshatra that will all depend on your dasha and your existing natal horoscope and your placements and your divisional charts all right so for that you have to see in detail which dasha is running and is venus associated with the dasha lords for example is venus the mahadasha lord or the antar dasha lord or the pratyantar dasha lord if it is so then you will feel these 10 times more okay there you go if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you're new then subscribe and if you want to see other videos in this playlist you can see transit and the bhagavad gita series and shrimad bhagavatam series also and if you want a consultation from me and if you want to know how this transit is going to affect you then you could go to my website down in the description section to book a consultation with me okay until next time god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him oh i didn't say this in the beginning i forgot sorry bye bye